Well, here at Shoreline, we talk about what does it look like when you put your faith in Jesus? What does it look like to grow into maturity? And many of you are followers of Jesus. Some at Shoreline have not yet made that commitment. But when you come to the cross and receive Jesus Christ and confess your sins and he becomes the leader of your life, what does it look like to grow in your faith in a meaningful way. And we've talked about seven markers of spiritual maturity, things that, you know, growing in God's word and growing in prayer and Christian fellowship. And, and this is today we're talking about one of those markers of spiritual growth that is the toughest one. It has the most why nots of any marker of spiritual growth. And that is, that is the marker of organic outreach or naturally sharing our faith with others. We can come up with more reasons why not to talk with other people about Jesus than anything else that Christians do. You say, well, how do you know that? How can you say that? Well, I spent the last 30 years traveling around the world and around the country talking with leaders. The ministry that's part of Shoreline Church, Organic Outreach International, is equipping over 32,000 churches to do exactly that. And it's hard. And there's lots of reasons why people say, I just, I love Jesus, I believe in the Bible, I'm in, but don't ask me to be talking about Jesus to other people. It's just, there's just too many reasons why not. And here's some of those reasons. And I would say all of these are fair. They're legitimate. People say, this is a real reason for me. Here's one reason. Why not? Why not naturally share my faith? I'm afraid. I'm just afraid. You know, um, you know that moment you start to think about doing something you're afraid of and all the water in your mouth just disappears and you get that really weird dry, like, like you feel like people can hear your mouth going, you know, and then, and then all that hand rushes, all that, all that water from your mouth rushes to your hands, and your hands start sweating, and your heart starts racing. People are like, that's what happens to me when I think about talking about Jesus. I just, I don't want to do it. That's, it's scary. Well, that's, that's fair. Okay, I'm afraid. Why not? I'm shy. Some people say, my personality, I don't, I'm not big on talking to people I like, <laughs> and that I know I'm just really quiet, and I'm not a big talker, and now you want me to go out and talk with people about Jesus. It just doesn't fit me. Why not? Why not? I don't know what to say. I love Jesus. I believe in him. I mean, I, I, but I, I, mean, I, I believe the Bible. I know the story. I mean, so many people will say, I'm a Christian. I've come to the cross. I've confessed my sin. I've received Jesus. And I know the story. I know that God loved us, that God left heaven and came to this world on Christmas when Jesus, God came amongst us. I know that. I know that Jesus lived a life with no wrong. I know that, I know that he died on the cross for all my sins. I know he was in the tomb for three days. I know he rose again. I, mean, I, know, I know what the Bible says. I get it. I just don't know how to you know, say it. I don't know how to just talk with someone about it. It's here, and it's here. I just can't put it into words sometimes. And so, so that's, that's a why not. I don't know what to say. Why not? I don't want to bother people or make them feel uncomfortable. I don't, want to, I don't want to make people feel awkward and uncomfortable. It's like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Kevin. Can I talk to you about Jesus? It's like, whoa, lighten up, buddy. You know, it's like, I don't, want to, I don't want to be that person that is just too bargy and kind of pushy with all the Jesus stuff. I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. That's fair. That's fair. Why not? I'm not an evangelist. I don't have the gift of evangelism. Only 3 to 4% of Christians are actually gifted as an evangelist. And you can say, I'm part of that 96% that doesn't have that gift, so I don't, that's my why not. I have the gift of compassion. I'm really nice to people. That's my deal. You do the Jesus, talk about Jesus thing. I'll do the be nice thing, you know, but that's, that's not my thing. Number six, why not? Because people in our society will reject me and reject the message. I don't want to talk about Jesus because I don't want the rejection of me, and I don't want to see the rejection of Jesus and his message. And some people say, I've tried before. I've tried to talk about Jesus, and it didn't go well. And the person didn't respond. So I'm, I'm kind of done with that thing. Why not? Why not? I, I, I lack the power to do it. I want to do it. I'm going to read the Bible. I'll get inspired. I'll hear a sermon. I'm like, okay, the next time, the next time that moment comes, I'm going to just jump in, and I'm going to talk about Jesus. So the moment comes, and you're like, <laughs> in your mind. I mean, not physically, but you're like, and you're just like, I can't do it. I just don't have the power to break through whatever that thing is and, and, and share my love for Jesus, even though it's inside of me and it's real. Why not? No one will listen to me. Why would someone listen to my story? Why would somebody listen to me tell the story of Jesus? I don't have authority or power over people. I, 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 no one's going to listen to me. Man, there's a lot of reasons why not. And, and yet... 
If you've come to the cross and received Jesus, if you've had all your sins washed away, if you know the love of God, I know there's that thing inside you that says, man, I'm shy and it's scary, but I just know inside of me I'm, I'm supposed to be living this out more. I'm supposed to be sharing this good news with somebody else. I just don't know quite where to start. Lord Jesus, I pray today as we think about these why nots, I pray that we will move from a why not and a reason we don't to a why not try? Why not take a next step? I pray you will move us to a place of being willing. And God, I believe that if everyone who's part of Shoreline who hears this message will just take one step forward in trying to live out sharing their faith naturally, God, you will, you will populate heaven with new people who will come to know Jesus because we were courageous enough to take your power and take one more step. So speak to us and teach us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to walk through a few passages in the Bible, and I want to encourage you, and I mentioned last week we talked about why not read the Bible, and I encourage you, no, no pressure if you did, but I encourage you to bring your Bible or grab one as you come in, and some of you maybe grab one from the rack as you came in, but if you have a Bible with you uh, that you can kind of, a Bible, a printed paper Bible, open it, open it up right now to 1 Peter chapter 3, find 1 Peter chapter 3, if you have a, your, an app on your phone with the Bible, take out your phone. And open up your Bible app and put in there, search for 1 Peter chapter 3, and we'll come to that in just a minute, okay? But I want to I tell you some things that God wants you to know. And I'm going to tell you some very specific things that I know God wants you to know. And you may say, well, how do you know what God wants me to know? I'm telling you, I know. I know what God wants you to know. And it's the same reason, it comes to the same, the same reason that I, I respond the way I do when people come up to me after a sermon. And sometimes people come to me and they'll say, oh, Pastor, I really like that message. Pastor, that was a really good message. I must always respond the same way. This is what I'll say. I'll say, can I tell you where I got all my best stuff? They're like, sure. And I'll say, I took it from the Bible. Every time. I said, I just stole it right from the Bible. But you're not stealing it because you're allowed, you're allowed to use the Bible when you're a preacher. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to. And so, um, and so I'll say to people, I got all my best stuff right from the Bible. So I'm telling you right now, I know God wants you to know these things because it comes right from the Bible. And I'm going to encourage you to not try to write all these things down because there's going to be a, quite a list of things that God wants you to know. But it's all on the website. You can go on the website, click on weekly readings, and click on the sermon notes, and you'll have all the notes I have right in front of me while I'm preaching right now. So if you want to get all these things, don't spend all your time writing. Spend your time listening, and then just download that later, and you'll have all, the, all these notes. So what God wants you to know Four things I want to tell you that God wants you to know. I know this for sure. There is blessing if you do the right thing and people do not understand. There is blessing if you do what God wants you to do and it's the right thing, even if nobody else gets it. It's, you're blessed if you do the right thing. Second thing, you do not need to be afraid even in fearful times. Fear is real and fearful times come, but you don't have to be afraid. All right? How can I say that? Because that's what God tells us. What God wants you to know you can and should be ready to explain your faith in Jesus. The, Jesus. God wants you to know that you should be ready when that moment comes. Even if you're shy, even if you're afraid, if the moment comes, you should be ready to explain your faith in Jesus. I know that. God wants you to know that. Number four, you can share your faith with gentleness and respect. You don't have to be angry, you don't have to yell, and you don't have to put pressure on people. You can, you can share your faith in a respectful and gentle way. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to. Now, how do, now you say, well, how do you know God wants me to know all these things? Well, look with me at 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, because I got all four of those things from this passage. And you're going to see them when I read this, all right? 1 Peter 3, 14 to 15. But even if you should suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. There it is. Do not Fear their threats. Do not be afraid. There's threats. There's things to be afraid of, but don't be afraid. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Now listen to this. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. That's your hope in Jesus. But do this with gentleness and respect. It's all right there. God wants us to understand that blessing comes not by everybody else responding, but by us doing the right thing. He wants us to not be afraid. He wants us to be ready to talk about our faith, and he wants us to be gentle and respectful when we do it. That's what the Bible teaches us. What does God want you to know? There's more. I'm going to tell you a number of things from different passages. What does God want you to know? Here's four more things. Even faithful and committed people deal with doubts. Did you know that? That even the most faithful people who believe the Bible and love Jesus sometimes have doubts. God wants you to know that. He wants you to know that you are called to make disciples of all nations. He wants us to know that part of our calling as his people 
is to share the story of Jesus with every nation in the world. And I've never been part of a church that has more potential for that than this church. Because two years from now, there will be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are here right now in this service, in the previous service, and the service before that, in our, in our community online, and also in the family worship venue. There'll be people that'll be scattered all over the world through education, through work, through military, whatever it is. We are a global church, and every year or two, people turn over and they're scattered. And, and one of the things God wants you to know is we're called to make disciples of all nations. He wants you to know this, that we are to help people come to Jesus and grow in their faith. We are to help people know Jesus and grow in Jesus. Not just come to know him and come to the cross, but then to take his hand and walk with Jesus and grow up in faith. That's our calling. Not just to tell about Jesus so people believe, but tell about Jesus so that they then follow him and live for him every day the rest of their life and into eternity. What God wants you to know is that Jesus is with us every time we share faith. Every time you talk about Jesus, every time you try to pray for someone who doesn't know Jesus, every time you love someone in the name of Jesus and talk about how, how God's goodness in your life, every time you share your story of faith or the story of Jesus, every time Jesus shows up. I'm convinced that the times that you will most experience Jesus in your life, that part of those times will be when you dare to have the courage to tell someone else about Jesus because he shows up and he helps you in those moments. He does and it's powerful. Well, how, how can I know that God wants you to know those four things. Well, look with me at Matthew 28. So turn in your Bible or go in your app to Matthew 28, 16 to 20. And in Matthew 28, 16 to 20, I want you just to, and if you have your own Bible, you want to underline the key points or what strikes you, feel free to do that. But here's what it says. And this is after Jesus has died on the cross, he's risen from the dead, and it's before he goes back to heaven. So it's a really important time because Christ is now risen and alive, and he's about to go back to heaven, but he's teaching his followers. And here's what he says. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him. Watch this, this is the disciples. But some doubted. Even the disciples were still struggling. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Jesus says. Therefore, you go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And listen to this. And surely, Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus, I'm gonna be with you. So understand that, that, that God wants us to be part of his work in sharing the message of Jesus. What God wants you to know. Here's three more things that God wants you to know. And turn to your Bibles to Acts chapter one and kind of put your finger there in your Bible or keep that there on your app in Acts one. I'll come back to that. But here's things we learned from Acts chapter one. What God wants you to know. God will provide the power you need to share your faith. When you're in that moment where, where you're like, you're ready to share and you're just frozen and you say, God, by your spirit, give me power. He will push you through. He will give you the power to do it. And here's the second thing. The Holy Spirit is with you and will guide you. You do the best you can to prepare, and the Holy Spirit will give you what you need in that moment. What God wants you to know is that you will share the story of Jesus all over the world, that God's people are called to go to the ends of the earth as well as to their next door neighbors. Now, how do I know that God wants you to know these things today? Because look with me in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Now, again, this is when Jesus is risen from the dead before he's gone back to heaven, so the resurrected Christ is teaching his followers. And we read this. Then they gathered around him, around Jesus, and they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They want to know if they're going to get political power back again. They've been under the thumb of the Greek government and then the Syrian government and now the Roman government. And they're saying, can, can our people be in charge for a while? And Jesus says to them, it's not for you to know the times uh, or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. I'm not going to tell you about the political scene and what's going to happen there. This is what I'm going to tell you. Verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, right where you live. In Judea, the surrounding community. In Samaria, the tough places that everybody avoided. And the ends of the earth. All of those things come right out of the teaching of Jesus. God wants you to know that even when you're afraid, he'll give you power by his spirit and you get to share the story of Jesus. What God wants you to know today. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter nine. In Matthew chapter nine, 
and I'll come to that passage in a moment, there's a bunch of things that God wants you to know. Here's one of them, and listen closely. The story of Jesus is good news. The story, God wants you to know this story is good news. Somehow we get this idea in our minds that, that telling people about Jesus is bad news. It's all about, oh, you're wrong, you're messed up, God doesn't like you, and, 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 and we, we get it all wrong. It's called the euangelion. It's called the gospel. It means good, literally good news. And he wants you to know something. When you go to someone and you say, can I, can I tell you something? There is a God who made you and loves you like crazy. That God knows everything wrong you've ever done and he wants to make you clean so he came and died on a cross and rose again to wash you clean. That God loves you so much he gave his best gift of his only son for you. And God wants to set you free and wash you clean and give you eternal life and lead your life right now. And he wants to give you joy like you never had and love like you never had and peace like you've never had. Sounds like good news to me. Can I get an amen? amen. I mean, it's good news. He wants you to know this is good news, not bad news. The world gets the idea, oh, oh, those Christians, they bring all bad news. No, we bring the best news in the world. God wants you to know that God's kingdom power can change lives radically. That when God breaks into a life, he can transform lives. People like us and people like those that you love and care about that don't know Jesus. God's power can change lives. He wants us to share that story. God wants you to know that compassion should guide our witness. That when we go out to share the love of Jesus, it should be compassion and love that drives us. When Jesus looked at people, he saw them like sheep wandering in danger by wild animals or towards a cliff with no shepherd to guide them. He saw them wandering like sheep and he had compassion on them and he loved them. That's how he saw you before you became a Christian. That's how he sees you today if you're not yet a Christian. And that's how he sees your friends and family members that don't know him. So we've got to see them with the same compassionate heart that Jesus has for people. God wants you to know that people are more open than we realize. He wants you to know that there are more people that are more open to hear about Jesus, to be invited to church, to pray with you, to learn about your spiritual life. There are more people more open than you imagine or dream. And he wants you to know that because it's true. He wants you to know that we need to be ready to go out with the message of Jesus. We should be ready and say, God, I'm ready if you call me to go share your message. And God wants you to know that we need to pray for believers to go out with the good news. We should be praying every day, God, send me out. Because I know you, I believe in you. Send me out. And we should be praying, God, send my children and my grandchildren out to share Jesus if they know Jesus. And God, send us as a shoreline church out every week scattered around this community and the world. God, send us out to share Jesus. God wants you to know that you should be praying for other Christians to become bold in sharing their faith, including yourself. How do I know that God wants you to know all these things? Where did I get all that stuff? What's the answer? Where did I get all that stuff? Right from the Bible. Look with me at Matthew chapter 9. Verses 35 to 38, right in the middle of Jesus' ministry, we read this, Matthew 9, 35. Jesus went through all the towns. He went through all the villages. He was teaching in their gathering places, in their synagogues. He was pro proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. He was healing every disease and sickness. Now watch this. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Do you know that that's how Jesus saw you before you came to him? If you're, if you're a Christian? He wasn't angry at you. I mean, he knew all about your sin. That's why he came and died. But he saw you like a sheep without a shepherd. And he said, let me be the shepherd of your life. Take my love, receive it. He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, now listen to this, the harvest is plentiful. People are open. People are ready for me, for the gospel, for Jesus. He said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The problem is we Christians aren't going out and sharing our faith. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So here's the prayer part. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Oh, God of the harvest, Send us, your workers, out every day with your love. It's all right there. God wants us to know the truth because if we know it, if we believe it, if we receive it, we will be swept into his mission even when we're afraid. We'll be swept into sharing about Jesus even when we're shy. It, it, we, because we'll understand that what God has given us is so good. How could we not share it? And so one more passage Turning your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, not first, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to learn four things in this passage. Let me share those four things first. God wants you to know 
that you are utterly new in Jesus Christ. That when you come to Jesus Christ, you are made new. All your sins taken away. All your past is washed away. And you're brand new. He, he wants you to know that you are a new person with a new vision and a new direction and a new life. And that's good news. And if you believe that, you'll want that new life for other people. He wants you to know that we've been reconciled through Jesus. He, he wants you to know that, that, that though here's God and here's us and sin, all this mess of sin and rebellion and anger towards God, whatever it was that was in our lives that kept us from God, that Jesus came and he washed all that away. And because Jesus came on, died on the cross and washed our sins away, God and us have been reconciled. We've been brought back into friendship, into fellowship. We have been reconciled and made whole in our relationship. God wants you to remember that because this is what we're called to share with the world, that there is a God who knows there's garbage between you and him called sin, but through Jesus he dealt with it and he wants to be reconciled to you in a relationship. That's the heart of God. And when we know that we've been reconciled to God, we want other people, I, I want my dad, I want my dad to have all this sin washed away and I want him to come into a relationship with Jesus. It'll change his life. We long for that for the people we love. So God wants us to remember that we've been reconciled through Jesus he wants us to know that we're called to a ministry of reconciliation, that once you have had your sins washed away and once you've been brought into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you're now sent to tell the world that there is a God who loves them and they can be brought back into relationship with God. We become his ministers of reconciliation, sharing that message. And he wants us to know that God makes his appeal to the world. Are you ready for this? Through us. That God's primary way of sharing this message of reconciliation and healing in Jesus is through us, his people, as fearful as we might be, as doubtful as we might be, as shy as we might be, whatever we might be, he says, you're my people and you're the way the world's gonna hear that people can be reconciled to God. How can I say all of that? Look with me at 2 Corinthians chapter five, verses 17 to 21. If you have your own Bible open in front of you, underline or highlight the things that jump out at you because there is so much here. Here's what it says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if you come to the cross and receive Jesus, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. You are a new person. That's good news. And all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Listen to this. Not counting people's sins against them. Why? Because Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. Not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. He's given us that message because we've, re we've seen our sin washed away. We've seen that we've become one with God and he loves us. And we now have a message for the world. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Listen to this. As though God were making his appeal through us. Do you hear that? As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That's our message to say to people, you can be brought back into relationship with God. He's made a way through Jesus Christ. Be reconciled to God. And then verse 21, this is so powerful and so beautiful. Listen to this. And God made him who had no sin. That's Jesus, the sinless lamb of God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him, in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. So that in Jesus Christ, we could become the righteousness of God. Do you understand? I mean, God wants us to understand this. He wants us to know this. That through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, that Jesus, he who knew no sin, he didn't just sort of take a couple sins on himself. All the sins of all the people of all history who would put their faith in him, all those sins were put on Jesus. And he took the punishment and he bore the shame and he took all the cost for our sins. And Jesus Christ, the spotless, beautiful, gentle lamb of God who never sinned, he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we could be sinless and spotless and we could become the righteousness of God. 
Someone say, praise God. He's been good to us. And he wants us to know that we have a message to share with the world. And so, so we have to look at all of our why nots. No matter how legit they might be in our hearts, no matter how deeply, all of our why nots, well, I'm not an evangelist, well, I'm not. And we need to look at all those and say, wait a minute, God, how can I take my why nots and turn them into a why not give it a try? <laughs> why not take one step? Because if we all take one step, forward in this. We all start praying for lost people more. We all start loving more. We all start talking about our faith a little bit more. It will change eternity. This is the call of Jesus. So we got to take our why not and turn it around. And so watch the screens and, and get a sense of maybe some ways that we can begin to turn our why not upside down and turn it around. We got to take our why nots and we got to turn them upside down. We got to kind of find a new way of thinking and living. So when we think, I'm afraid, why not commit to seek the boldness of the Holy Spirit who lives in us? Why not in those moments where we're like, okay, I'm going to ask this person if I can pray for them, or I'm going to share about how Jesus has changed my life, or I'm going to, I, when I, but I'm stuck. Why not say, Spirit of God, give me boldness. I'm afraid, give me strength, and let the Spirit push you through. Because God's ready to do that. I heard a story years ago. I love this little story. It's about a husband and wife. And a lot of times couples end up quite different than each other, you might notice. And uh, in this couple, the wife was like one of those people that could just talk about Jesus naturally and easily. It just, it just flowed out of her. She's probably an evangelist. Probably one of that three or 4% that just comes naturally. And so she could do it real naturally. Her husband, who believed the Bible, who loved Jesus, who was totally a committed Christian, he's one of those guys that like, you know, the, he'd tell his wife, he'd say, listen, when I even think about talking with my friends about Jesus, my mouth gets super dry and my hands start dripping with sweat. And his wife really helpfully says, well, honey, I got a great idea. When that happens, just lick your hands. <laughs> I don't think it's that easy, <laughs> but, but practical, um, kind of gross. But, but, but you know, the re there's moments when we're afraid, acknowledge that, but say, spirit of God, push me through, bring me through, do whatever it takes. When we think I'm shy, why not learn to share the story of Jesus in a way that fits your unique personality? You are made the way God wanted you to be made, and you're just the right person to share Jesus with some people. Not with everybody, but with certain people. I thank God that my sister Gretchen is just one year older than me. She became a Christian before I did. My sister Gretchen is, is as shy as you can imagine. She just, is not, just doesn't like talking in groups, and, and even one-on-one, -on -one, she's just wired that way. But she began to love me and serve me after she became a Christian. She would tell me about her faith in Jesus. She'd invite me to youth group. She'd invite me to church. And I wasn't real open, but she just kind of did it in her own. And she would, when I'd ask her questions, eventually I'd ask her questions, she'd start to talk about her love for Jesus. She, through her shyness, she pushed through, and God used my shy sister to help me come to know Jesus. Use the personality that you have, but find ways to push through and open your life to share about Jesus. When we think, I don't know what to say, why not get trained and practice until you know just what to say? You, we, we do equipping and training here every single year at Shoreline. And as a matter of fact, at this, at this uh, organic outreach event with Lee Strobel, there'll be two breakout seminars. You can pick two of those to go to. And we'll do training for parents on how to share Jesus with their children. How do you share Jesus with teenagers? We're going to have training. For, we're going to train all kinds of ways for different life stages. How do you share Jesus with friends in the workplace? And we'll equip you and we'll train you, but take time to get equipped. Sign up and come to that, but go to the breakout seminars and get trained to share your faith. Even today, out in the courtyard, we've got a booth where you can go and we've got books that you can look at. And they're not selling anything there, but there's books you can look at that you, you could use to help you learn to share your faith. Uh, there's, there's actually a, a prayer to lead someone to Christ. If somebody says, I want to become a Christian, how do I pray with them? We have just a written out prayer. You can get a copy of that. Or you can download it from the website and put it in your phone. So if you're talking with someone, they want to become a Christian, say, hey, hang on, I got this really cool prayer right in my phone or right here in my purse or in my wallet. 
But we can, we'll give you tools, we'll help you, but why not get equipped? Why not get trained? And, and why, why not prepare yourself to share faith in Jesus more naturally? When we think, I don't wanna bother people or make them feel uncomfortable, why not recognize that many people are hungry for truth, grace, and the love God offers? Sometimes like, I won't share with that person because it might bother them, but they might be absolutely open and their heart might be longing for someone to tell them about the love of God, but to not inconvenience them, we don't even tell them. And, and what if we do share with someone and it kind of makes them uncomfortable? Say, oh, I'm sorry, okay, no problem, I won't share anymore. That's okay. But there may be somebody waiting and longing and hungering and you may be the person that God is sending to them. When we think, I'm not an evangelist, or I don't have the gift of evangelism. Why not recognize that all Christians are called to shine God's light? When I say, well, I'm not an evangelist, you have to say, but wait a minute, wait a minute, but I am a Christian, and every Christian is called to shine the light of Jesus. You're not called to necessarily go on an evangelistic mission, but you are called in, in, the, in the flow of your day to go to your school campus, to go to your neighbors, to go to your friends, to your workplace, and when the door is open, to share about who Jesus is, how he's changed your life how to follow him, that what he did on the cross, you need to be ready to share those stories and to love people well in the name of Jesus. When we think people in our society will reject me and the message, why not, reject, why not embrace the reality that all kinds of people talk about all kinds of things with freedom in our world and rejection is part of the deal. Not everyone agrees on everything, that's okay. And you can say, maybe I'll share with somebody and they might, they might reject me, they might reject the message. And that, that could happen. And somebody said, it has happened to me at times. Get trained to share the best you can. And if that happens, say, okay, that's part of what Jesus said would happen. But what if they don't reject you? What if their heart's open? And there's nothing like that moment where somebody says, I want to know more about Jesus. And you could be the person to share with them. When we think I lack the power to do it, why not ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with heavenly power? When you hit those moments where you feel powerless, and you will, You'll have those moments. Say, Spirit of God, fill me with power that I don't have enough in and of myself. And then when God does something, he gets the glory because it's his power that moves you forward. But pray for power. Pray for courage. Pray for strength. When we think no one will listen to me, why not trust that there are people waiting to hear good news and that God is sending them to you? Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. There's more people ready than you think there are. And we say, but not in our world, not anymore. That's all changed. It's still true. You will be amazed if you will pray and gently and kindly talk about your faith in Jesus, how many people are hungry for more. Their lives can be so vacant and so empty and they want something more and they'll see in you, this is real. You'll be amazed at how many people are more open than you. The harvest is still plentiful. The problem is the workers are still few. Let's change that. Let's become people who share the story of Jesus. And then one more. When we think, my life will be my witness so I don't have to say anything. Why not recognize that people come to faith when they hear the truth of God's love and receive the gift of Jesus? When we think, you know, and we think sometimes, and I've heard a lot of people say that, their why not is this. Well, why not say something? Because I'm gonna just live a good Christian life. And my Christian life will show people what they need to know. I don't have to add words to that. I can, just, I can just live a good life and let that be an example. Can I tell you what's never happened to me in my 40 years as a Christian? This has never happened. I've never had anybody come to me and say, Kevin, I've been watching you. I've been watching your amazing life. Um, I've watched you, you know, work in the yard. I've watched you on the golf course. I've watched you, and I, watch, and I could just by, I'm watching your life, and wow. Oh, your life. You know what I've come to know by watching your life? i watched your life and I've come to know I'm a sinner. And I need Jesus. Just, I mean, you know you haven't said anything, but wow, your life is so good. I know that I'm a sinner. I need, and by watching your life, I know that Jesus, God, left heaven and came just by watching your life. Quite a life. And I know that Jesus died on the cross. I know he rose again. And I know he offers forgiveness of sins just by watching your quiet, silent life. I've never, I've never had anybody say that to me. Ever. You know Why? I'm not that good. <laughs> Can I tell you the truth? What am I going to tell you next? What am I going to tell you? I'm not that good and neither are you. <laughs> Sorry to bring the bad news. Jesus is the good news. We're not always the good news. Our lives aren't that good. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
And how will they hear if someone will not speak words, declare, pro, the word proclaim, if we won't express the message of Jesus? Yes, live a good life. So when somebody says, why are you so different? Now the words come. Jesus has changed my life. I know it's scary. I know there's a lot of why nots. But why not take one more step in being willing to love and pray and serve and share the story of Jesus? Oh, Jesus, we pray that today, that every person gathered today here in the family worship venue, every one of us who's put our faith in Jesus, we pray that we would uh, just, just understand that, that you call us to be ministers of reconciliation, that your ministry and your mission is being fulfilled through your church, and that's us. And so, Lord, send us and fill us and use us to share your love. Remind us of all that you've done and the goodness of, of your message. And we say, Lord, let us take that next step forward.